Today's video is brought to you by Bandzoogle. They make it easy to build a stunning website for your music in minutes. You can choose from hundreds of mobile friendly themes, customize your design and content in just a few clicks with Bandzoogle's easy visual editor. All the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including tools to sell your music and merch commission free, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, integrations to pull in content from all your online services like Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, and live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. Bands will go plans start at $8.29 a month and include your free custom domain name. Go to bandsoogle.com, try it for free 30 days, and be sure to enter promo code WALLAMAN to get 15% off the first year of subscription. Bandsoogle, websites built for musicians by musicians. Today, we are talking about playing over a single chord. And today's chord is a major seven chord. I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm gonna give you different options that you can use while improvising and creating musical stories over a one chord vamp. Grab your guitar, let's get started. Hello, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice, develop that voice on the instrument. This is your pencil, you are the author, and we're gonna to learn today how to communicate more effectively musically. Today is all about this context, the major seven chord context. Now, I realize that in real life, it's not often that you're gonna have to improvise over just one chord, like the one you're hearing here, right? It's not often that you're gonna have that, but it's gonna be super beneficial for us to do that because if you can improvise and you know different choices over a single chord, it's gonna be much easier later on when we improvise over full chord progressions. And we'll talk about that later at a different point on this channel, but for now, single chords and we need to start by understanding what a major seven chord is. Let's do that. When I refer to the term major seven chord, it means that we have different notes together. Well, that's what makes a chord, right? Two or more notes played together create that group of notes, which is a chord. A major seven chord has a formula, just like any musical element, and understanding the formula of a musical element will help you understand what choices you have because you need to match different musical elements. We've talked about that in the previous video when we're dealing with the minor seven chord. Now, if you haven't watched that one, don't worry. These lessons are kind of standalone. You can watch the minor seven version after this one, but stick with me. Basically, you want to match formulas together in order to sound the most appealing to the most people. Now, you can, of course, break the rules, but today we are going to match those elements. So what makes a major seven chord or a major seven arpeggio, which is basically the same thing. It's just a matter of, are you playing all these notes together or one after the other? Well, a major seven chord is a chord made of a root, the one, that is the note that attracts everything else. And in this case, we are in A. So if um, we hear this backing track, the bass is playing a lot of A's. Now it's playing a few other notes around it, but it's, the anchor is that A. Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop. Everything that you're hearing here is attracted to that note. That's what gives it context, right? So we have a one, a root, and then we have a major third. That is um, the, the note that determines the nature of the musical element you're using. If you are hearing a chord that has a major third, well, that chord is a major chord. There are a lot of different major chords out there. As long as the third is major, it's a major chord. Therefore, you're gonna pick from a major scale, a scale that also has a major third. Uh, if you had a minor third in that chord, we'd be dealing with a minor chord, and therefore you'd be picking a minor scale. A lot of minor scales, a lot of major scales. But today, we have a major third. We also have a perfect fifth. The role of the fifth, if I play a fifth right here in relation to that one, that just kind of adds strength. Another name for a chord made of a one and a five is a power chord. It's a powerful chord. It's uh, used in heavier forms of music. Not just that, but uh, heavy metal relies heavily on those power chords because the fifth is a powerful interval. The harmonics that you're going to hear in that note in resonance to the root 
They blend very well and they add that sense of, sense of strength. And there's a fourth note in the major seven chord and that's a major seventh as opposed to a minor seventh. Now, I said that the third determines the nature of a musical element, right? That means that a chord that has a major third can have a minor seventh in there. It would still be a major chord, right? But in this case, we have one, which is A, major third, perfect fifth, and major seventh. Okay, these four notes, I could play it an octave higher. That's a major seven arpeggio. Now, if I play these four notes together, I have a major seven chord. This backing track is based on that chord. There's a few other notes in there, which we'll talk about, but if I play my major seven arpeggio over this backing track, because the backing track is built around a major seven chord, it's gonna fit perfectly. Okay, so that's what I mean by matching the musical elements. Now, when dealing with a chord progression or a single chord like this, you really need to pay attention to everything going on. So here we have a guitar, a keyboard, that kind of funky thing, and a bass. All these instruments together are using different notes. And so you've got to hear everything you, your ear needs to be trained to listen to everything and there's something else going on here ba, 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 ba. hear that kind of stands out ba, 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 ba. what is that well let's uh let's fish around there it is ba, 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 ba. all right these two notes are part of what creates that musical canvas we're gonna play over. We need to know what they are because we need to respect these notes. So what are they? Well, we've got this measured according to the root, the one, that's a major seventh. And then we have a major sixth. Okay, so the major sixth is not part of that major seven uh, chord or major seven arpeggio, it's an additional clue as to which scales you're allowed to use. That kind of limits your choices as a, a, a player, right? Because you're matching the elements. So now we no longer have just the four notes of the major seven arpeggio. We have five notes to respect. All these notes are the major seven arpeggio. One, three, five, seven. Okay. And an additional sixth. That's a major sixth. If I reorganize these, um, these notes, in order of appearance, we have one, three, five, six, seven. Okay, five notes. Now, I covered that in the previous lesson, but in Western music, there are seven notes that you can use. Yes, you can break the rules, you can add chromatic passages and all that, but we're just going to consider that we have seven. What does that mean for us? That means that five of the seven notes are already taken. That means that if I'm an A, and I am an A, which means that the one is A, that means that I've got to, I've got to construct, I've got to build my scale, my musical alphabet around that A. It's going to be A something. So I'm going to have to have an A. I can't build this around B flat because if I did, oh, no, it needs to be built on A. Also have a major third, which is going to be respected, right? I can't play minor third. That clashes. I need to respect the elements. I've got a fifth. I've got a major sixth. That's a major six, 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 and a major seven. Two notes are not heard by the backing track. That means that I can inject to my, my playing, my musical ideas, I can inject one of these two notes. So the missing notes are two and four. And there are different versions of twos and different versions of fours. That's where your freedom as a player can um, happen. There's a major two and a minor two. Which one are you going to use? Well, it's completely up to you. What kind of flavor do you want to give here? That's where your freedom as a player comes into the picture. A major second, I'm going to play that two octaves higher from this so that it really um, stands out. I've got a major second right here. That's two frets higher than the one. That's for the major second. The minor two, minor second would be one fret higher than the one. 
those two options are valid. Now you're probably more used to the major second. It doesn't shock you. I'm playing one, three, two. The minor two does work. I promise it does. Now you might think, ooh, it doesn't, it clashes. It really doesn't, you're just not used to it yet. You're allowed to do that, that minor second, because it's not given to you by the track. If I play, if I build some musical ideas long enough with that minor second, you'll start to be accustomed to that and it won't sound weird anymore. Still sounds weird? Okay, then forget it. Don't play it. But but it's a valid option. You can make it work if you want to. Um, personally, I don't really like that sound, so I'm not going to go there. But some of you might like it, and you go there. That's where you know we all have our way of speaking, which you know this whole channel is based on that. Finding the things that make you you and apply those on the instrument. But don't be scared of, of experimenting different things like that. The fourth is also a valid option because it's not heard in this backing track. We can have the perfect fourth, which you probably used to. It's that note right here. Now, if you just play that, it needs to be resolved, right? Your ear kind of tells you, ooh, that's a little out there. But in the context of a full skip, might work. The augmented fourth is also a valid option. Why? Because there's no indication as to which one I should use, so why not use the augmented fourth, which is one fret higher. And that's also a sound that we're used to hearing, but those are your options as a player. Now we're going to get back to that in minor seconds a little bit because when I was playing it, it did sound a little off. We're going to try to make it sound a little, little more um, in tune with what uh, our appreciation of music is. We're going to try to do that, and that's the kind of work that I want you to do with the, the pack that you can get by visiting the link below with all the backing tracks we're going to use in this course. All right, so we have that minor second as an option. We can do that, it's not given by the backing track, but we feel that, ooh, that really clashes. Well, that's where we need to talk about roles in different notes. Each note has a value, an emotional value, and some are gonna sound, you know, open maybe. Some are gonna be a little more unstable. Some are gonna be like super boring and peaceful. Some are gonna be kind of boring you kind of give characters to these notes the minor second if i played it on its own that sounds kind of tense right so we're going to take that into consideration tensed doesn't mean bad tensed a tensed note just means that well if you land on it for a while it's going to sound tensed uncomfortable maybe we can use that to add a little bit of uncomfortableness and excitement in a way because if, if you bring someone to an uncomfortable place and bring him back home, when he's brought back home, he's going to feel more um, comfortable, right? The whole, he's going to appreciate home even more. So we can think about that as we're playing. And I'm just going to play the scale for now. We're going to make up a scale using that minor second, and, and we'll see how it fits. So we've got the one, which is A, that minor second that we talked about which is one fret higher. The major third, we need to respect that. Uh, the fourth can be um, whatever we want, but we'll use uh, maybe a perfect fourth. Uh, the fifth is given to us. The sixth is also given to us by the track. It's a major six and a major seven. Okay, so we've got these seven notes. One, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just play that scale over the backing track. Thank you. 
doesn't sound as bad as as this, right? It's kind of used as a passing. Okay, so that tells us that that second needs to be used as kind of a passing tone to add a little bit of excitement and then go back home. I'll play this a little faster. It's starting to sound good and a little different than the typical, you know, um, Ionian option, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or Lydian, which we played a little bit earlier, one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven. You just have to explore and use this, you know, according to taste and according to what you want to express musically. All of this is part of the exploration. I really want to encourage you to explore some of these notes that you might have avoided for a while just to get a good feel for them. If anything, it will really tell you why you don't like that particular note. And the more you know about these things, the more options you'll have to communicate more effectively on the instrument. It's an exploration game. It's a communication game. And it's, it's really important to do those things. Because again, later on, when you're playing over multiple chords, you will understand these options. You will know what these notes do, um, how to use them, where to use them, and, and what to avoid if you don't like them. That's part of developing your own personality on the instrument. That's what I had for you today. And uh, I want you to download the pack again. The link is below. Very important to do that so that you can work on your own and see what you come up with. If this was your first visit to this channel, thank you for checking this out. If you liked what you just saw, you should consider subscribing. Every week, three videos like this one are released on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice on the instruments, develop that voice to tell your own personal musical story. Stay tuned for the next video in this series in which we're going to explore the dominant seven chord. Super interesting chord, very useful. A lot of choices on that. That's coming pretty soon. Thanks for watching this. Practice well.